Um, I'm Sarah. I'm the least knowledgeable person about crypto on this call. Just going to put it right out there. But I've been working uh, with Althea since like, God, I think like, yeah, tw was it 2020 or 2021? Like a hundred years ago. Um, through, you know, the kind of introduction of INFTs through the latest introduction, which is very hard for me not to say out loud because I'm not good at secrets. Um, and I'm really super excited about what is going to be announced today. And um, I also have the honor and privilege of uh, working to help create their platform and test it out and talk about it. Um, RF, um, do you want to introduce yourself or should I should I make up an introduction for you? Hello, everyone. Good to be back. Uh, this is a community call. I know we have not had one of these calls for a while. Uh, we've been building intensely over the past uh, year, actually, since the launch of Character GPT. We've been learning from the market, taking feedback from a lot of you. Um, and so I'm excited to share, I think, what is an exciting roadmap ahead. Uh, we have a really wonderful uh, technical team uh, with us that is also on this call, but for various security reasons and security protocols, uh, we try to ensure and make sure that um, that they're protected all the time during uh, these calls. So I'm excited to talk to you today. Uh, I'm the CEO and, and, and co-founder of Aletheia AI. Um, and uh, I have with me Brent, who's the VP of Community and Marketing, uh, and Maliha, uh, who is our project manager. And both of them have been intimately involved in the product. Sarah is a is a old friend, uh, and she has been with me on this uh, AI journey, uh, you know, from you know a long, long time ago. I, I suppose uh, during the earlier days of uh, Sophia the robot. So very excited to reconnect here and put this out there for the community. Let's dive in. Um, here we go. <clears throat> As the population of INFTs within Noah's Ark increases. So too will the possibilities of interactions and collaborations with and between these INFTs, enabling the emergence of an intelligent hive mind. Imagine reverb on that. Intelligent hive mind. Mind, mind, mind. mind. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Thank I you. got you. <laughs> Next time we definitely got to gotta get some uh, sound effects going. <clears throat> anyway, an intelligent hive mind powering the ARC's AI engine. This intelligence will enable us to explore what it means to be human and what constitutes a personality and also discover how an intelligent metaverse powered by such an intelligence can help shape our stories, culture, and intelligence as we realize the true meaning behind being homo neurons. This is from a 2021 white paper that Alethea put out there. So just needless to say, um, this latest announcement is sort of part of a much longer plan that's been in the works for a while. Um, so there's in the world of crypto where, you know, consistency and reliability is kind of can be oftentimes a rare commodity. I'm really proud to be associated with these guys because there's a big grand master plan that we're all kind of like moving towards and they've been on track just by crazy highs and lows. And it's a really cool product. So Arif, do you want to like launch in and just say what yeah. it is? So we are at the intersection of generative AI, and we have been uh, since we started the company in late 2019, uh, and also uh, blockchain, right? So generative AI, really everyone understands it now, the abundance machine. When we spoke about this intersection several years ago, it was very difficult to uh, have people believe that this would this convergence would uh, happen, right? And uh, we're seeing this convergence play out live right now. Uh, there is a very interesting um, uh, article uh, recently written by Vitalik on this convergence as well. And a number of thinkers are looking at this. One is an abundance machine and the Web3 revolution, the blockchain infrastructure is, is a scarcity engine, right? So these two technologies, when they converge, if we are able to look at this thoughtfully and create uh, meaningful abundance that is anchored in scarcity. We can truly create value for people. Uh, that sounds so abstract and so uh, difficult to realize, but concretely, one of the first applications, and I remember Sarah being with us uh, in, in New York and at Sotheby's, right? And this was the first uh, INFT where we were able to create the first intelligent NFT. Now, this was an AI model of chain making an NFT interactive and uh, be able to talk 
uh, and also learn. This was the first sort of um, artwork that could speak, right? And it was also an artwork that could speak, but that could also be traded, bought, sold. Um, and this was actually the first uh, primary uh, use case that we showed, hey, when you combine these two technologies, something really interesting happens. Your NFTs are not no longer static images. Um, they are uh, living, breathing uh, artworks that can be bought, sold, traded because you're using the blockchain infrastructure and you're also using AI tools. Um, so th that was a real first proof of concept. That was unbelievably cool. That was a real career highlight because it was like truly seeing, like I, we went, I got to see backstage at Sotheby's and see these like ancient artworks and just feel a part of like the history and evolution of art. And, you know, humanity creating images of itself. And, you know, everybody at Sotheby's was like totally blown away because you can always look at the art on the wall of Sotheby's, but infrequently does the art talk back. This was like the only thing there where it was actually interacting with the user directly. And um, it was just, it, yeah, it was a really profound experience. It was very cool. Thank you, Sarah. I think you were a key part of this as well in helping us shape the personality of Alice. And it was awesome to bring this uh, uh, collaboration to life and uh, have, I think this is Greg, uh, back then he was a CTO of OpenAI. He was tweeting about this because it really was marrying these two technologies. Now, I've been transparent that OpenAI, even back then, their AI model, their API for GPT-3, which we had early access to, was a closed source model. Right, it's not easy for us to access. We had to go through several hoops to get access. So this was in the early days before ChatGPT launched, right? This uh, beta access. So this is some historical context. And then we launched what is called an INFT, allowing everyone to go and create their own intelligent NFT assets, right? And a simple concept, uh, there are three parts to an INFT. Think of it as like a human, right? Like a soul, a body, and a mind. The soul is an intelligence pod, a personality pod back then, an intelligence pod that is fused with the body and it can access uh, the mind, uh, which is basically off-chain compute to create interactive experiences, to have these NFTs become intelligent and interactive. And so we've always had this roadmap, which is an evolution. Like when we communicated this to our community, I think in uh, 2021, uh, how do we progress on this roadmap and where are we going with this core technology, with this fusion of crypto and AI, with this fusion of blockchain and generative AI? Uh, and if you really think deeply about it, and I was transparent back then, and I'll be transparent right now, level six to 10 is where uh, genuinely the community can shape the protocol and move us in a direction of decentralization. But where we are today is we really want to talk about agentic autonomous AIs that are able to do a lot of cool things. And we've been able to, as a community, build up to level four. Transparently, level four was a very computationally intensive uh, adventure for all of us because we learned a lot as we saw all of these different models come to life, uh, whether it was stable diffusion, open source, whether it was DALI, closed source. Uh, it gave us some perspective as we uh, navigated and heard the feedback from our community is really important, right? Because we've anchored ourselves as a uh, decentralized uh, protocol that's building Web3 infrastructure for generative AI. The, the primary asks from our community uh, has been one of the biggest frustrations that we've heard repeatedly uh, many, many times is that, hey, we like our INFTs, but they just talk to us, they interact with us, and you are rate limiting the INFTs. That means the INFTs back then, I think on Noah's Ark, were only able to do seven conversations. Uh, on the third party DAP, uh, my character.ai, the feedback we also received was it's about 14 interactions or seven or 14 interactions. And the reason for all of this was primarily because we were GPU constrained, compute constrained. Compute was a primary limitation on our end, not because uh, we were being stingy or thrifty with compute, but access to compute, the ability to pay for that compute, the ability to not burn your entire, uh, uh, the, the protocol's uh, growth and future traje trajectory on compute 
that is not going to be utilized to make these calculations. We had to think very critically about how much compute we wanted, right? So I think we're going to solve that problem today and, and really, really excited to talk about what we are doing to solve the compute problem. Um, we've also had feedback from our community on, hey, we need more utility for the pods. Like, okay, great that they can be fused into NFTs, but the NFT market is largely dead. What else can you do for these pods? We've looked at them. We want to do more with them. They've also asked for more options uh, in terms of more language models, more large language models, more decentralization. We've had community members train their own uh, language models and asked and have been transparent and have asked us to host some of these language models, uh, which we were not able to do in the previous structure. But I think in the coming structure, uh, what we will share shortly, uh, it's going to be very interesting. And then there's, of course, archives, right? Uh, this was launched just before, I believe, the NFT market sort of uh, collapsed. Um, and I think the opportunity here for most of our loyal uh, community holders uh, will become apparent uh, once we talk a little bit about how we're solving some of these uh, computational problems. So all of this was happening. Epoch 1 and 2 feedback was coming in loud and clear. Uh, our community was giving us feedback on the revenants that they uh, had, like they want to do more with them. How can they realize the potential of revenants? We have done quite a number of uh, uh, revenants with actually the first AI agents in some way who were uh, training our language model. And because of that, they received credits uh, in the Noah's Ark ecosystem. And from those credits, there was a window of time where these revenants were able to convert those credits into ALI tokens. Uh, and so think of it as like, we really genuinely went out to the market and uh, allowed uh, our INFC owners to contribute to the AI uh, models that we were working on and also compensated them for it with rewards, right? So this is sort of the ask from the community. All of this was happening. Uh, and at the same time, uh, OpenAI uh, had really reached a critical mass and awareness in the consciousness of the world with ChatGPT. More recently though, I think what they've launched is quite interesting, but at the same time has some scary, um, uh, you know, one one should uh, look at it from the perspective of like extreme consequences are possible here because we've gone through this with uh, sort of the Web2 uh, mindset before. So when I saw this really interesting presentation from Sam Altman, and it's not just him, I mean, any centralized Web2 company, uh, you'll see basically that uh, this is Sam. Uh, he's talking about the GPT store, right? Uh, the GPT store is, is a really interesting concept where... The thesis, the primary thesis, and I want to share this with the entire community here, is there is going to be a class of bot entrepreneurs, a new type of entrepreneur that comes to, uh, that, that, that is going to be able to monetize and to be able to make a living. Just like there are TikTok video creators or YouTube video creators or um, uh, people who uh, create unique images on Instagram or there is going to be an entire class of entrepreneurs who will make money through bots. And OpenAI launched this very interesting concept called the GPT store. And you basically create your GPT and OpenAI promises you revenue share, uh, although they are vague about it. OpenAI gives you opportunity to access a mass market of chat GPT users uh, so that your GPT can be discovered. A lot of interesting developments here to make GPTs accessible to people, but they come with some inherent risks. And I'll just pause here because I know, Sarah, you're also a bot entrepreneur, right? Uh, and I know that you have built some bots yourself. Uh, besides uh, helping us with Alice, you went further down this trajectory and maybe you can tell us a little bit more. I try. I tried Bard, rest in peace, now Gemini, uh, as well as custom GPTs. I can tell you the best might be might be um pi pi is very emotionally intelligent i i think it's like funny like i don't know if anybody has seen the memes lately about the latest introduction of gemini but it's very constrained like it's um google's very risk averse and it's very it wants control and so you kind of get into funny situations with that like if you ask so gemini is kind of the answer to chat gpt where like the way dali is embedded in chat gpt Gemini also has image generation embedded and people have been doing this thing where they're like, 
asking Gemini to create images. And it's like, <clears throat> clearly Google is just like trying to give a certain narrative, um, but they're trying to diversify. And it's sort of like the absurd extent of centralizing control too much over what the actual like um, bot is producing. <clears throat> and other bots sort of back off of that to different extents, but the main ones, the ones that kind of have like the most GPU are in some ways the most centralized, um, as you can kind of see. And so it's it's a interesting landscape that's like ever evolving, but there are kind of fewer alternatives out there than you might think. Uh, the main thing here is that these centralized models, whether they are Gemini or OpenAI's ChatGPT, is uh, they, they they really do control a lot of uh, information. So this is one way that the store, like a centralized entity, can control uh, who they feature, like which type of bot entrepreneur gets featured. But what's really also fascinating on the next slide is the structure of all of this is dependent on one centralized cloud provider, in this case, Azure for ChatGPT, right, uh, for, uh, for GPTs. And the AI models below ChatGPT, DALI, GPT-4, they're all proprietary and locked. And they create a GPT for you as a user. Now, they can take down this GPT anytime. Nobody will know uh, any... GPT that is created. I think Sarah, you were telling me a little bit about a GPT that you created called what was it called again? Bragbot. You're talking about Bragbot. Bragbot, like, and and it does br braggadocious comments or something. Yeah. Well, I got tired of bragging about my company. I have a company, and I got tired about bragging about us on sales calls, and so I just fed a custom GPT all of the cool things my company has done, including worked with RF to do this, like awesome Sotheby's thing and a bunch of other really cool projects we've done together. And then now when I get tired, I can just direct people to interact with Bragbot so that it can brag <laughs> about my company so I don't have to. Okay, no, that's wonderful. But now imagine that um, the Bragbot is taken down without your permission or consent, Sarah, how would you feel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> this is the problem is, I mean, listen, it's better than nothing. Like I do want to put things in perspective here. Like it's very... It's a really cool tool, but right now it's being hosted, like it's like currently being used by a lot of potential clients who are looking at it. And if all of a sudden OpenAI were to take down the custom GPT feature, we would be kind of screwed because we don't even know how many people we sent that link out to. And we would have to like <clears throat> revise, I mean, that hyperlink is now defunct. There's also the fact that like, you know, they have access to all this information about us and like, it's not particularly sensitive, but there are functionalities that I want to use with more sensitive data, but I can't because then it's sort of like owned by OpenAI. So there's a lot of functionality that I would like to use with them, but I can't because of um, essentially it's just too controlled by one power. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think the gated access and the fact that you don't really own this, whereas it's being used uh, um and it's so convenient, right? And that's that's sort of the sleight of hand where uh, you should have some agency on a tool or content or a bot that you create. So uh, to solve this problem, uh, we had to go to the root of it, right? So what cloud service provider could we rely on? And on the next slide, we went and looked at a lot of the decentralized physical infrastructure networks that exist out there. Uh, for example, um, and these are some live conversations we're, we're having right now as well, uh, but there are some really interesting partners that are trying to solve the GPU problem. Uh, I think on the, uh, on the right, you'll see compute networks. If you click next, you'll see basically all of these GPU networks have a cost structure when you compare them to the big boys. They also have to succumb to the ability to host these uh, GPU units provide electricity, create a sustainable economy, and to be able to provide these GPUs that don't go down, that can serve a user's needs. If a GPT wants to be able to create an image or a selfie or create content, uh, is it more reliable for the GPT to be created and hosted on Google Cloud or Microsoft Cloud or Amazon AWS versus a decentralized alternative? So we experimented with a number of different places and we realized like, I think one of the really interesting things was we should try to solve this problem ourselves or at least make a dent in it such that we can decentralize the entire stack. 
So I'm going to start talking about level five now. This is just a context for the community. We want to now introduce AI agents. And this is basically the evolution of INFTs. And I'm quite excited to introduce it. Brent, if you can go next um, and have a sense of how all of this will fit together. An AI agent is fundamentally built on a decentralized uh, GPU cluster and on, and on open source AI models. This is sort of a high level animation that I want to share with the community. Think of all of these base layers going back to Sarah's wonderful animation. All of this can contribute GPU to serve, uh, to be able to do inference for some of these AI models that then create value for that DPT, right? And that DPT is basically an AI agent. Uh, so the concept of a GPT uh, versus a DPT, uh, an AI agent that is fundamentally decentralized at its core, at the base layer. So if you compare and contrast this with uh, what exists uh, on the next slide with OpenAI's current model, where it's just really one large centralized cluster allowing you to create a GPT, versus a bunch of different decentralized GPUs, very much like BitTorrent or Bitcoin or Ethereum, actually providing value uh, and allowing inference to happen at scale for some of these DPTs. What we've learned throughout human history is that if you can find stable ways to secure decentralization, you have a better, um, like more harmonious humanity. So yes, it does fit in. I just want to add to your point, Sarah, where you talk about humanity, right? Like the freedom is so important to us. And what you mentioned earlier with your experience creating Bragbot and how, you know, if OpenAI decides to take it down, you're screwed because you've been using that for some time and it's a service that you're kind of relying on. So that freedom gets taken away from you and all the hard work and time and effort that you've put into something just gets taken away in a blink of an eye. So yeah, like it, are serious it's, pain points. Yeah, it's super destabilizing. I mean, like this kind of stuff happens a lot. Like it's not just a fear that comes out of nowhere. Like for a long time, many publications uh, were completely reliant on Facebook. Now Meta's um, algorithms prioritize news media on timelines, and uh, when they just switched up the algorithm, there were told there were whole publications that went under, like Policy Mike mm -hmm. was like a whole publication that went under just because of one change of what, you know, Meta wanted to prioritize. So it's something that a lot of companies and, and people in general are very sensitive about is like, you know, who is, who actually owns the control? Because like we sometimes think OpenAI, um, you know, Facebook, these are things that are just platforms, you know, they're just platforms, but they're really not. They are like, there is somebody calling the shots behind it all. So in, in contrast, if we put it side by side, if you look at OpenAI's GPTs on the left, which is really, you can create your own GPT. It's built on models that they control and it's hosted on a centralized cloud that they control. This is a model that works in the world. It helps a lot of people, creates a lot of productive value, but it comes with some significant trade-offs in that the GPT is not censorship resistant you don't have a clear idea of revenue share. Uh, anytime it can be taken down, it's not permissionless. Um, and on top of that, all of this is feeding the giant open AI machine. On the right side, you have the AI protocols ecosystem, which is using really open source models, uh, fine-tuned by a very capable technical team. Uh, you have the DPT itself, which has some real interesting innovations, AI agents, that are really uh, innovative at the smart contract level. And I'll walk you through some of those innovations, but then they're fundamentally powered by a decentralized cluster of GPUs. So these, it's the full stack that we need to solve. If we genuinely want agentic AI autonomous agents, we need to solve for this full stack. Uh, to further just emphasize this point, uh, GPTs themselves, and this could you know, whether it's GPTs or whether it is any other company that's building tools for bot entrepreneurs, the primary issue is around the centralization, the closed system, the fact that you don't own it, the unclear revenue share, and the fact that you don't know what goes into these models, right? Like Sarah really wanted an accurate depiction from Gemini of historical record, but because the weights are not open, she's unable to see uh, that, uh, that record, right? Whereas with open source models on the next slide, you can actually start seeing on the next two slides, sorry, 
uh, you can start seeing that uh, you can have transparent revenue share on chain. You can have it be decentralized and censorship resistant as long as it's built on GPU clusters that are distributed and decentralized. You can use open source models that have their weights publicly available. You can use community level governance and you will actually end up owning the IP of the DPT that you create. So nobody can take it down. That is the promise. Very difficult to implement it in reality, which is why the team uh, has been working extremely hard because whatever we try and bring to the community, we need to battle test it first and make sure that people are ready. Um, and also that it provides an evolution for all of our community members who are pod holders, INFT owners, so that they are always part of this uh, journey with us. Um, so I'm just going to focus on the smart contracts innovation occurring for a DPT because this is a lesson we learned uh, when the NFT markets uh, disappeared or vanished from thin air, right? Uh, or at least the liquidity in those markets vanished. One of the problems with NFTs right now is, is liquidity. And if you go to the next slide, Brent, uh, what we are doing to solve this is every DPT created will have embedded liquidity in it. Uh, it's a big word, embedded liquidity, but we have an Ethereum improvement proposal that will be going live shortly as to what is the exact smart contract innovation that we are doing here and why it deserves to be its own standard. Um, what's interesting is when you create a DPT agent, uh, for example, that agent, based on the awareness of that agent, based on the popularity of that agent, it would be able to be uh, traded, but also people would be able to participate and have functional utility when they are using these agents' keys. So let's say you really believe in Sakura, the agent, uh, you would be able to uh, interact with that agent when you purchase a key of Sakura, uh, basically like almost like a fan pass. If you're a big fan of Sakura, uh, when you purchase that of Sakura, you would be able to do unique things with Sakura that you were, Sakura's agent that you were not able to do. And Sarah as the creator of Sakura's agent would earn transparently all on chain. And we're going to show all of this to you live uh, uh, with Sarah as uh, the person testing all of this out live, right? So, I'm really excited to like uh, showcase this to, to all of you. And just to re-emphasize this again, just one more time, a DPT is built on a decentralized cluster of GPUs. So like this is the basis of what a DPT is. You must have decentralization in the GPU clusters and you must have AI models that are open source. And that AI agent itself must have embedded liquidity to provide people the opportunity to uh, be able to create these agents. So with that, all of that is the context. It's time to show how it looks like. This is a third party DAP built on the AI protocol that Sarah will walk us through. One thing that is, is important is what we're gonna show the community is fundamentally powered by the community's pods, by the community's GPU contributions, by the community's ability to uh, stake uh, ALI, by the community's ability to contribute archives. So Brent, I think it may be helpful just because I know that there are lots of pod holders, revenant owners. Let's bring them through this cluster, this GPU cluster uh, that is going to be powering this DAP that Sarah will show right now. This cluster I believe is called Propolis and it allows all of our community members, our pod owners, to go and connect their staked pods uh, to essentially uh, earn some rewards for contributing to that cluster. So Brent, I think you can share your screen and walk people through Propolis. If you can expand your screen to a larger, because it kind of like looks, so this is not live yet, everyone. This is uh, going to be released very shortly, uh, but Brent can walk you through a little bit of the pods that are staked into this cluster, but also the output of the GPUs that is coming up. Yeah, so I think it's a it's a good time to talk about pods, right? So um, they're uh, going back to what R spoke about earlier, um, and with what the community was asking about. And you guys all know, I had one on one conversations uh, with a lot of you guys, and I want to uh, take the time to, th uh, to thank you guys for spending some time with me and telling me. Um, about what you're liking 
uh, about uh, the uh, protocol and your INFTs, and then also uh, what you're what you're missing. Um, and one of the the most resounding uh, bits of feedback that we got is just more utility for your pods. And so, what uh, we we talked a lot up until this point about decentralization of uh, not only um, uh, compute and models uh, and DApps, obviously. Um, and and what, what, what the upgrade to the AI protocol is going to be is going to be um, about your pods. So this affects your assets and what they can do. So uh, pods will now, and we'll have a slide about this, so we'll, we'll go over this and we'll make sure we get you guys good graphics. But just for the introductions, um, intelligence pods are evolving yet again. So they evolved from just being able to simply create INFTs to being able to create dApps in Epoch 2. Um, going into Epoch 3, uh, pods are going to be able to govern the compute that is on the AI protocol. And so there's a lot of very exciting things that are happening from that. So with this governance um, and with, the, with you guys utilizing your pods to put compute where you would like to, um, you will be uh, rewarded. Uh, it, it, for it, for that from that hive, so there's a lot. I feel like we, we we're kind of not chronological here, but this is all really exciting, and I promise it'll all come together. Um, but what Propolis AI is is a hive that's been created with a level five pod um, that users are able to, uh, or owners of pods or archives are able to connect to and govern the compute. So um, we can go into an example. I actually, have a uh, my um, my wallet connected here. And you'll, you'll be able to see that I'm able to provide or I'm able to decide with my pod that I would like to provide compute to this hive. And so by doing that, all I simply need to do is, is connect my pod here. Um, uh, for doing that, for, for taking my pod and governing where I would like to, uh, or choosing where I would like to uh, give my um, compute uh, I earn points for that. Um, and we'll go a little bit deeper into the specific hives uh, later. But uh, again, what I'm doing, the, you know, the, if you see the whole protocol and there's compute for multiple dApps and as more dApps expand and more hives are created and more things are on the AI protocol, uh, holders of pods will be able to choose where they would like to put their compute by connecting their pod to that specific hive and you will earn rewards for for having that connected and so um Thank like you. like our oh i was gonna say like our mm -hmm. mentioned this isn't live quite yet um but it's it's coming soon um and i'm very 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 excited about this i wanted to just add here the reason why i wanted to just dive into the hive because if you go back to the previous image on the google slide this hive that all of you are seeing right now uh is built on a decentralized uh distributed cluster this is the hive that you're all seeing that you can contribute to. And this hive is going, is powering this main uh, DPT DAP, right? Where Sarah will show the demo. So it's important that we communicate how the infrastructure, the underlying layer is decentralized. You can, uh, and maybe we'll share even uh, the Grafana dashboard of how productive this hive is. What is the output this hive is generating? How much content is this hive? creating and what it means for our community members when they can choose, hey, if this is a pod they'd like to contribute to this hive, what is it that this hive is creating as an output? So this hive part is is where this, this hive is what is powering what Sarah is going to show all of you. It's very important that everybody understands the distributed nature of this product, the distributed nature of the compute that is occurring right now, uh, because none of this um, is relying on one centralized cloud provider. This was a key distinction between previous seasons and the epoch right now. Previous epochs, we were relying on primarily AWS, but now we have gone uh, distributed and people can contribute to these hives with their pods. And we will be releasing information on this through a white paper, but also there's going to be quite a bit more uh, that will be shared about these hives as it as as we move forward. So, without further ado, Sarah, walk us through. Uh, if you wanted to share the DAP, uh... this is the landing page for mydpt.ai. Will be live very soon um, with mass access. I created my account. Um, I just to like go through the um, 
initiation tour with you guys uh, to start. Um, so you are welcomed with some credits. You have credits and energy. Um, I'll get a little bit into that later, but for let's just go through the regular tour. So you'll be greeted with these like um, very striking <laughs> DPT characters like <laughs> Star Putin. And you can interact with these. These are DPTs that other people already created and you can chat with them. You've got your profile in the corner with your credits on the top right and your energy next to it. Um, right, I was just gonna proceed a paste. Okay, so this is a DPT, a decentralized pre-trained transformer. It's a tokenized AI system that has special specialized functionality and embedded liquidity like RF was talking about. These include AI models, data sets, and storage capacities. Each are integral uh, to functionality of the DPT. So this is like the, um, your, your DPT is also like kind of the name I would, I would give to a DPT character because I like to forefront the personality driven aspect of this. I'm going to overstep yeah. there and say, I, I don't like that name because it's so much more than just the personality because this is, I think there's a couple of things too to mention. So this DAP uh, was built on the base chain, um, which is really exciting for the AI protocol to go to the base chain. And these are all, all these DPTs are NFTs as well. Um, so these are uh, owned there uh, in your wallet, and we'll talk a little bit more about your wallet in a little bit. Um, but these are also tradable assets, which is is just is really exciting. Like, here's the thing about my DPT character stance is that it's sort of like the DPT is the how, the character is the why. It's like the DPT is very cool because it's a fundamentally new technology. It's very exciting. But what you're creating when I'm about to go into it, what you're actually creating is a character. All right, let me get through these because I'm super eager to actually make one uh, with everybody. Okay, energy and credits, like I mentioned, credits and energy allow you to utilize the MyDPT site. Um, so they're the lifeblood. And I believe you can buy these with Ethereum or with Ali and you get kind of like a big boost if you use base Ali coins. Keys and holders. Every DPT can issue keys. The key holder collaborative community of each DPT is pivotal to the success of a DPT. While keys allow the DPT to generate its own liquidity, key holders are able to create dreams for the DPT and they share rewards earned by the DPTs. Uh, dreams. So dreams, these are the, these are really fun. Dreams are an exciting new form of interactive media that allow you to uh, engage in fun, fun scenarios with the DPT. Dreams are exclusively created by DPT key holders, allowing for collaborative creativity for everyone. Oh, I'm so excited to show dreams. Those are, uh, <laughs> yeah, so much. Um, okay, so then your wallet. Here's my favorite part of this whole uh, system. It's unbelievably easy to set up your wallet. It's just like it instantly creates one is really awesome to me. Um, so yeah, this is your in-app custodial wallet. Uh, it allows you to interact with the layer two base network on top of the Ethereum blockchain and is your place for storing your DPTs, keys, base ETH, and base Alley. You can deposit and withdraw base ETH and base Alley in and out of the wallet. And important to note, you will need base ETH to cover any transaction costs. You will acquire base ETH by selecting buy in the wallet. Uh, benefit as a creator in the MyDPT DAP, DPT creators or owners of the DPT are rewarded 3% of every transaction for every key buy and sell directly correlating with the popularity and demand for your DPT. When you create a DPT, the NFT is in your wallet. All creator rewards allotted to the DPT are tied to the ownership of the NFT. Additionally, if creators own keys, they're also eligible for all key holder rewards. Uh, the activity feed details all of the key transactions of the DPT and highlights the significant, all the significant milestones achieved. This provides a tailored overview of the DPT's journey on the platform. The activity page is a real-time user-friendly hub that offers comprehensive overview of the latest transaction activities across the platform. You can claim your creative earnings and rewards, your creator earnings and rewards on this page. For every key buy and key sale, 3% of the transaction goes to creator, 3% of the transaction is divided amongst the key holders, and 2% goes to the DAP, and 2% goes to the AI protocol. Very transparent. The leaderboard highlights top DPTs and creators rewarding their engagement with the Artificial Liquid Intelligence Utility Token, or Alley, weekly based on rankings and user interactions. The top 30 creators are also rewarded based on the sum of the performance of their DPTs. Explore different DPTs, dreams, and their creators on the Discover page. 
this is the place to begin your search amongst a diverse range of DBTs. Your DBTs and dreams will also show up here for the community to see. All DBTs can be agents, powerful LLMs and voice tools, dreams or other AI media, and each allows for interactive and operational agentic, oh my God, experiences. Now you can begin your journey of DBT creation, Reverb, customization and interaction and be rewarded for your creativity. If you ever want to revisit this tour, you can find it in your avatar drop-down menu. Just show them a little bit of the showcase page with the trending characters, how it's all, uh, and then the discover page as well, before we go into the creation, just so that people get a sense of the site. Yeah, no, this is like, I mean, this is why um, Arif has a lot of gray hairs and I'm sure everybody has a lot of gray hairs. We've been working, they've been working tirelessly with the amazing team. Um, of engineers to actually get this stuff off the ground. And so truly strong shout out to the Alethea engineers. Um, of course, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, a partnership with a third party uh, to help us build this out uh, in, a, in a structured way. But can you not go to the leaderboard, Sarah? I know you want to get money. Okay. Can we do the yeah. discover page first? Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Time uh, kudos to many different teams, but if you go to Stoner Putin, let's try just a quick chat with Stoner Putin because I know you're gonna have fun. So Stoner Putin, his computer vision model, the the way he is built, the animations here, uh, the firmness of his belly, all of this has been has been created by a wonderful uh, computer vision team, and they've okay. Thank you, Sarah, for zooming in. You see the flower on his belly, right? So. But uh, what, what's really interesting is you can see also what it's powered by. Um, and this is where the hive comes in. The AI models, if you see the word there, the realistic rapture, lifelike visions, Llama 2, uncensored, propolis, TTC, uh, TTS. You can also do very interesting things like buy and sell, which we'll cover later. But the creator of Sonar Putin obviously has created satire here. Um, which is, of course, you know, quite interesting from the standpoint of uh, agentic AI. We need to be censorship resistant. Uh, it's really important because the platform is completely open. The community can report and vote down characters it feels are harmful. Uh, I won't say vote down, but definitely report. Uh, but why don't we just try a simple chat and a dream first, Sarah, with uh, with Stoner Putin. If you wanted to dream with him, that might be fun. Like choose okay. a dream if you like and, uh, you know, just uh, see if you want to have some beach bliss with Stoner Putin or you want to rule uh, Russia again or if you want to have, if you scroll down, what was the last one? Barber, chill out? There's a chill. really good one. If you go a bit down further, explore more, I think there's maybe a couple Why more. Why does he have so many dreams? Oh my Ooh, God. Who is <laughs> Make Stoner vodka. Putin. Make vodka, not war. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. So if you own a key of Stoner Putin, you are able to create a dream with him, right? Which is very interesting. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, we had a couple of people. We it was we had a couple of people mention the utility of the keys uh, in in Discord, um, and that it, this is one of the main utilities of the keys is, is you're able to participate in this collaborative creativity. It's one of the key ways to 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 go up the leaderboard and and get rewarded is through dream creation and creating uh, your to to create a really engaging and fun character and, and clearly Sonar Putin whoever created Sonar Putin <laughs> has done that um so I, I did want to want to flag that as part of the utility of keys you don't have to be so direct but okay <laughs> let's try it. are you dating Tucker Carlson that's a great question let's start chuckling heartily no man I'm all about love and peace not political pundits gesturing dismissively plus the dude doesn't even know how to play a mean game of chess <laughs> I guess that is important for Russians. Um, but he knows how to play the game of love. And Laughing softly. The, yeah, go the ahead. Speed, the speed of the responses, the quality of the LLM responding. This does sound relevant in the context of uh, Putin, but also relevant in this context of his personality and the clothes that he's wearing, the fidelity of the model, the face. As you continue, Sarah, you'll start falling in love with Stoner Putin. <laughs> That's true. There's something just so gentle about his vibe. Um, oh, and you can rank the answers. Oh, and it looks like you can regenerate them too. Yes. Yeah, look at this. So let's say I was want I want him to be more into Tucker Carlson. I'll regenerate till he 
gives in. Dude, love isn't just some game you can win or lose. It's all about connection, understanding, unity. Oh, God, this guy. Pausing briefly to light up a joint. <laughs> and besides, Tucker seems more into playing games with facts than hearts. Wow. Slam. Um, this is fantastic. But I do like, should we go through the actual creation process, Tara? We can. Yeah, we can. I'm conscious okay. of time. I just wanted the people to have a quick taste of what's coming because a lot of people are asking us for access codes. It's coming, guys, uh, or Lithians, just stay with us. We need to make sure everybody understands how to use this uh, correctly and thoughtfully. Sarah, let's go down there the is, path. Yeah. Hmm? There is one really cool thing about the chat so that we haven't explored is yeah. that you can get a photo. Do you want, oh, do you want to generate selfie. a selfie? I was, I was going to get into it, Malia. I was going to try to like end with a climax. You know what? <laughs> Everybody's no. too excited. There's yep. so many places to go. So many yep. things to show. <laughs> Let's say like, um, send with your shirt off or unbuttoned. How about that? Thank you, Sarah, for say, please, fam because... fam family friendly prompt. Okay. I think that's pretty family friendly. Unlock selfie, is it worth it? I think it is. And what happens here is your energy gets consumed as does your sense of uh, pro, you know. So uh, let's, 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 okay. I think Sarah's having too much fun with this. Uh, as you can see, all of you, if you solve the compute problem, we can create really powerful, beautiful, interactive, rich experiences, right? So I wanted to talk a little bit about the hive earlier, but this is what a good hive does. It solves the compute problem. And, you know, soon Stoner put in this character, a satirical character that Sarah has somehow created as a user-generated character uh, or interacted with, is now able to create very interesting content. Right? Let's go through a normal DP creation because I'm conscious of your time. I'm conscious the community wants a product, but I know you can endlessly chat with Stoner put in and bring all of your fantasies to life. Absolutely. Um, so let's move on and um, create a new version of RFCon. Um, so let's say RFCon, because I, I asked in the Discord, what was the character I should create? And uh, the it seemed like there was some unanimity around RFCon, the Bollywood actor. Uh, let's see what it goes with. You know, I'm kind of, I'll give it something kind of general and we'll see what it produces. I'm curious. I also like just testing the creativity of these engines. Look at that. That's interesting. It really went formal with the gray jacket. So I might actually, I'm going to try taking that out. And definitely got the five o'clock shadow kind of even more pronounced. But I'm just going to regenerate just to see what else it provides. I'm not going to like go through too many options. I'm not going to be a perfectionist to kind of just show you all the functionality. Um, I like it. So the other interesting thing is just very quickly, if you're not satisfied with the image here, you can also upload your own image, uh, which is a very cool function where you can bring your mid-journey or your Leonardo images and you can bring them here and the AI would like process these images and bring your actual agent or your DPT to life in, in an expression. Hey, Sarah, um, one, one thing before you click generate, click advanced yeah. options if you don't mind, because I think this is one of the important things to represent um, the hive, right? So uh, currently uh, this is launched on the Propolis hive. Um, so you can see it here. So this is part of the decentralized creation of these DPTs. And then um, another really fun thing that you can do uh, is, is, is select the, the open source model um, that you want to use. So there's there's different models for image creation here. Um, it's, it's on realistic. It's on the select like visions. But if you click it and you can, you can see we'll have there's like 3D visions, um, anime, tune, uh, kind of a dimensional uh, a cyber, and th 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 this is, you know, what some of the community members have created so far. Uh, this is only going to increase as, as more and more models are uh, come available and people create them. Um, so it's really exciting. I just want to showcase that as part of the, 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 the decentralized ability that's creation and hives and are, are, that are now on the AI protocol, are, we're able, it's able to happen. So it's, it's really, really exciting. This is kind of iteration one but so much more is, is to come. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I'm going to try animate because I some people in the Discord seem to be um, popping off about that. So let's just do RF kind of striking Bollywood actor in his 30s as rendered by an anime. Um, and then we'll get later into his wants and desires and what he wants from you. Interesting. Okay. Shall we 
uh, proceed then. Okay. So I'm going to take silence as a yes, because I can't see you. Um, all right. Oh, this is great. So here's the other thing that I find very cool about this. Um, in the creative process, it can be hard looking at a blank page. It kind of auto-generates some ideas for you to think about based off of your initial text. So it's generated a um, an about section. RF Khan, a charismatic Bollywood actor delving, it's sort of like with um, Dali or many other um, like, uh, you know, image generation services, it'll like change the text prompt slightly so you can see what it's really based on, which is very useful. All right, scenario. Let's just tweak this slightly because I always like when creating um, a scenario for it to really like, for the user to have a reason to be there. Okay, um, intro message. So how about this? Boom. All right, so now we've got a conversation starter. Entertainment, role play, sci-fi, comedy. These are the tags that you can see. I so like see. The three, satire is one of the categories. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you have him in entertainment right now. Um, if you scroll up just a bit, you can go through some of the categories. There we go. And then, yes, once again, these are sort of like the, um, <clears throat> the Hive you can use and the LLM that you can use. Um, and right now it's kind of auto automate automatically these two. Oh, got to save that progress. I'm very excited about this. The voice cloning feature here as well. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have not actually uh, tried this. Okay. Just putting in my name. Okay. Select the cloning voice model. I think it's just. Oh, okay. Good, yeah. At least. Okay. okay. Press clone. Here we go. This is crazy. I used to, um, I used to help with the Sophia uh, text-to-speech, and I was in a recording booth for 40 hours, four zero hours, to clone my voice, to help improve her voice. The technology has advanced just unbelievably. It's pretty so, late, just to see if you picked it up, because you're doing a Zoom recording as well, so I just want to make sure. This might be a little bit buggy, but uh, let's try. Okay. Hello. You can select this as my voice or choose another option. Okay, I think it's got a little bit lower register kind of sarcastic y <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, Yeah, and for over Zoom too. Yeah, and it's really good for this character, which is really coming together very coherently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, most importantly, terms of service um, and advanced mode coming soon. Um, ooh, bonding curve. I don't know if we want to shout out to that right now, but I'm going to create your DPT. So there are some on-chain transactions that are happening right now as this uh, NFT is minted uh, and this DPT is created. So this is where um, the, the uh, DPT is, the, the NFT is being sent to your wallet on the base chain. Uh, the DPT is being cre created and registered with the Propolis Hive. Um, and all of the, the exciting smart contract work is happening right now as it's also generating this character. And I called it a character for you, Sarah. Thank you, Brent. Oh my God. Although I, <laughs> I was fighting with you because it provided some action. Um, yeah. It just highlights what, you know, I mean, I don't know, as a creative, that, that to me is the fun part. And then it's like validating. It's just such a cool character creation device. I don't know. That's what I get out of it. Oh, look at this. That, okay. Let's go. Let's see. Would you want to okay. be an extra? So he starts off. Oh, wow. Somebody oh, my just goodness. Bought... Some yeah. beautiful anonymous person out there in the community just <laughs> bought it. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Let me see the activity. So, yeah, I like, let's say I create this absolutely amazing character. Um, oh, wow. Do, like, looks like RF Khan, my other satire is doing pretty well. Um, you can, you can get benefit by people interacting um, with your character. So this is just like general interaction. I'm going to give a test to it. Um, so it's like, he has the prompt that I gave it about, do you want to be in this film? And be like, absolutely. And then I'm going to ask something redundant just to make sure that everything's working. Like, what's your film about? Ah, oh, my dear friend, just like RF always greets me, um, the script revolves around a revolutionary concept, decentralized AI. Good. So it is working, um, reflecting back the prompts I've given it. All right. I'm going to use the prompt now for the selfie feature again, because that's very cool. And see what it comes up with. Look at this soulful 
face right here. Doesn't this just scream a drama about decentralized AI? And this is like the longing song. I feel like anime fans are going to love this because it's just such a beautiful like manga piece right there. It's so pretty. Fantastic. Okay. So right. let's to um what you the kind of the coolest thing that you can do with these characters which is create a dream so currently you can see like you know who's created it um holders keys issued my keys interactions buying and selling you know you have all the information you can need about this character uh but you don't have any dreams here so dreams like we've said before are like custom interactions so let's create a dream so whenever you created this dpt uh the first part the creator is automatically given one key. So that's part of the smart contracts that's going. So when you create DPTs, you do have one key. And then you can also see here uh, the amount of keys issued. So it looks like uh, uh, seven other or six other people have purchased your keys. And oh, wow. uh, during this time, you can count, you can see that you're accruing rewards as well for every uh, buy and sell for keys. So it's really, really exciting because that's what, you know, where INFTs, we had this feedback from a lot of uh, community where INFTs are really exciting, but they're they're personal. Uh, that's just something that I'm using or I can talk to and I'm getting the benefit of it. Whereas with these DPTs, the, uh, the, the whole community can uh, benefit, can create, and can come together to uh, create dreams, which we're about to go to. Uh, but it's an exciting new feature to get uh your DPT to rise up and down the, the leaderboard and everyone is, is, is winning who's, who's taking part in this, the creation here. So as a key holder, you, you need to have a key to have a dream. Um, so you have seven people that have keys at the moment. Um, and then you as the creator were given uh, the first key. So you, you can. Boom. No, I get it. I've been like blinking a lot and rubbing my eyes. Cause like I've been using this platform and AI video a lot and I'm underslept. So I get it with you, Brent. Okay, let's generate a freaking dream. Okay, I'm curious what it'll say if you auto-generate something. Um, so the, the importance of dreams is that these are all scenarios and unique custom scenarios that show the multi-dimensionality of your AI agent. Um, you could have a dream with Arif Khan where, uh, sorry, I should have chosen a different name. You could have a dream with an agent. <laughs> you can have a dream with an agent to teach you math or to write poetry for you or to be motivational or to uh, help you with a productive task. The dream is like a very specific context in which it draws um, the user into that context and solves that users. It's essentially like almost like wish fulfillment uh, because what we found is that the LLMs do get uh, uh, really much more specific and concrete when uh, the dream scenarios are created. So it really is an actual utility. The moment you purchase a key of an agent that you believe is going to do well, you now have the right to go and create a dream with that agent's IP, which is quite interesting, right? So it allows really popular agents to rise up because a lot of people are looking at keys and dreams uh, as, a, a, as keys to unlock the value of these interactive new forms of uh, media experiences, which are dreams. Okay. All right. Next up. Ooh, interesting. So this is like um, on the set. It's clearly a very Asian influenced Bollywood film. And this is where this would be very intimidating if this was your casting director. But to be honest, I really like it. I like the halo and the glow. Um, and that's a pretty good background. That feels very tech super sci-fi. Very yeah, cy cybery. Um, dream avatar. Ooh, I love the rainbow. Look at this. This is beautiful. So, oh yeah, to go back up, this is the display image. So this is what people will see, like what they'll click on when they um, go into your dream, like with the, um, you know, make love, not war Putin. That was like the image we clicked on. I like to think about that as your album cover. Yes, that's a good way of thinking about it. Album cover. Here's the background. Here's the actual character. So that, let, that outfit is really, really it's cool. It's banging. It's yeah. like, totally, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it, think uh, it's okay. a lot of really good uh, high quality engineering work and prompting work from the LLM team. Uh, and also the uh, quality of these uh, models because we've solved for 
the GPU cluster, again, the speed and the delivery of it is unrivaled. It's not something we've seen other uh, folks be able to do. And what's going to be really interesting is as more open source models uh, come to life uh, in, in the market in the next couple of months, it's not just going to be these static images. Um, it's going to be uh, really this, uh, uh, you know, movie, uh, small movie clips that are also possible to be uh, created. And then just buy some energy with your credits. Oh, yeah. well done. So, okay. So see if we can generate it again. All right, it's generating. It works, but sometimes you might face an error too, which is kind of like uh, a small error that we can easily fix uh, with the with the with the team here. All right, All right. it's here. That's the cover image. Not too bad. So All right, I'm excited to be directing Mollywood's great film on DPTs. Are you ready to deliver a dramatic monologue on decentralized AI and showcase your passion for the futuristic technology? I sure am. I will be reading from the book of RF chapter one verse two in the name of DPTs. <laughs> um, and then, oh, here's another thing we didn't talk about. Asterisk clears throat. So this is like where you can kind of signal like what um, your your character is doing physically. Um, role play, role yeah, play is featured. You ready? And then let's see what the character says. Ah, uh, yes, grins widely. Let's dive right into the heart of our story. Sarah, I remember you saying like uh, the LLMs had some sort of like, uh, it, it's quite interesting when you start learning a bit more about their characters and trying to build a parasocial or uh, social relationship with them. Um, so if you wanted to explore that dynamic, that's also interesting. <laughs> that was very, um, very subtle there. Or, yeah, I will try to um, flirt with this <laughs> character. Let's see. Okay, like, um, I'm just going to channel my inner uh, pickup artist. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Um, of course, you'd be the lead with eyes and a figure like that could avoid watching this film your charisma is enticing oh my god i'm going so ridiculous laughs heartily thank you thank you now let's see in our tale glances down momentarily before looking back up again dr sharma discovers that traditional centralized ai systems are vulnerable to manipulation control by powerful entities i think dr sharma probably needs a love interest are you casting for that i'd like to volunteer let's see how does he pick up on any of my hints well now winks playfully oh we certainly <laughs> wouldn't want to leave out the romantic angle pauses briefly then continues enter our leading lady a talented hacker named zara malik who stumbles upon his work um, let's see. Oh, I don't even know how to top that. I already got cast as Zara Malik. Uh, let's see. I think we should practice the kiss scene <laughs> <laughs> right now. And then maybe like leans in. Oh my God, this is getting, this is getting, I'm testing, I'm testing the audience here. Holds up hand to stop her. Whoa there, Missy. Let's save those moves for the cameras, chuckle cycling. And he sent me a selfie. Wow. I am getting mixed messages, community. I am getting mixed messages. Will you unlock the selfie? That's the question. Of course I will. Look at this. He's holding up his hands. But look at those eyes. His hands say no, but his eyes say yes. So in settings yeah. over here, let's say I want to say like, oh my God, look at what a tease, you know, this character has been. Um <laughs> I can go down here and share this like amazing um, text of this brilliant conversation on X, or I can just copy link and post it in the Discord, which I'll do now for everybody's benefit. Yeah, that'll be fun. And now you're be getting rebuffed. So one of the thing too, um, I'd love to see check out the dreams. <clears throat> we can see if anybody's created any other dreams uh, with this DPT. 
Yes, because you just launched a DPT. It has keys. Any key owner of Arif Khan. Oh my God. Wait, wow. this is so crazy. This is it's got complicated really quickly. Oh my no, God. No. What? There's see. also a whole gallery of Arif selfies, I think. Um, some really fantastic ones too. If you go up a little bit. Scroll up, yeah. And you click on gallery, there are some selfies that Arif's been sending uh, to other chatters. This is crazy. Yeah. Look at this. He's wakeboarding. <laughs> um, camping and taking a selfie in Versailles or something yeah. on a beach. Oh my god. And there's the one that you got earlier. So yeah, there's a god whole dang. record. And you've been using quite a bit of the site, Sarah, so your energy has been used up, but you can always top it up again by going to the plus sign at the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good point. But it's that you have, right? Let's, uh, I think, right. Sarah, so far you've covered quite a bit. Is there anything else, Brent, that you want her to cover? Because she's done a fantastic job, Sarah, at genuinely creating a wonderful satirical character called Arif Khan, who's popular. I suppose one small thing is that, you know, collectively, as dreams are created, as interactions are happening, um, and keys are bought and sold, the DPT will kind of rise on the leaderboard and becomes yes. trending on the Discover page. Yeah, Very there's a lot of incentive of growth. The leaderboard, if we can look at the leaderboard and how we reward, how AI agents can climb the leaderboard and their creators get rewarded as well. So there are multiple, multiple tiers of rewards. Uh, there's creator earnings, there's leaderboard rewards. Uh, the protocol is really supporting this third-party DAP uh, to make sure that um, it can uh, it can grow. Uh, so Sarah, you wanna share your screen on the leaderboard reward and how far along are you? Absolutely. I was, I, this Discord is too hilarious. It's very distracting when I'm trying to uh, do like actually right. do stuff on this platform. So nice. let's see. I don't think I've made it to satire. Did I put them under satire or do I put them under um, like, what was it? Personal growth or something like that? I'm under satire. Time to populate the leaderboard. If people start chatting with him more, it will oh, start showing. I see. Okay, got it. Yeah, interesting. I wonder um, if he just isn't popular enough yet. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Maybe you put under other. Come on, guys, make me more popular. Now yes. I don't feel in it. So lots of rewards have come your way already, Sarah. If you go to your wallet. Let's see. Boom. Oh shit. Whoa. I just made a lot of money. Oh my God. I'm a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's better than this is smart contract base, right? So you can actually go and see if you want to open it, because this is on base. If you go and click on Explorer, uh, all of the rewards that you get will show up here, actually. Whenever you claim your rewards, it's all on chain. And because this is on the L2 of base, uh, the guest transaction fees are a lot lower than on the main net of Ethereum. So uh, that's really, really exciting. And we worked with the company uh, uh, to closely collaborate with them uh, called Privy. They've supported the third-party DAP to build this out as well. So if we can go back to the uh, the wallet, um, you can you can claim your rewards. Like you can try and claim you've earned sixteen point two five ALI, and as you claim these rewards, uh, they would also show up on chain in sixteen sixteen point two five ALI. Hey. Uh, yes, you hey. just made so. And I think if you click Explorer again, it may, it should show up, right, Brent? Because it's all on yeah. chain. If I'm thirteen yeah. seconds ago, she got uh, uh, base ALI. If you go to ERC token transactions, it should be ERC twenty. Let's see who's right. Okay, yes, I'm correct. Sixteen point two five ALI was sent to you, Sarah, about thirty four seconds ago when you click claim. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. This is one. so basically you have ALI in your wallet. Dang. Oh my God. I'm a millionaire, which reminds me, I do have to um, go to Mexico yes. with all of my newfound um, <laughs> cryptocurrency. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I do have to hop off. Um, yes. I think this is the perfect time for you to talk about like the actual um, mechanics of yeah. how the platform works now that the dum dum is signing off. <laughs> oh no. Thank you so much, Sarah, for walking us through that with your enthusiasm, humor, joy. Always a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, I appreciate you uh, always, always you being the there. Community. It's a joy. I really love, I love hanging out with you guys. I love, you know, 
evangelizing your awesome stuff. I make a lot of jokes at Arv's expense, but I really am really excited about this. Okay, you, I'm going to go to Mexico with all my coins. All right, we'll see you, we'll see you there. See you, sir. Okay, uh, thank you so much. I think we are coming to the tail end of the call, but Brent, if we can pull up the slides just so that everyone's crystal, crystal clear. I want to yeah. emphasize how potholders are contributing to this uh, hive that is powering this third-party DAP, right? Uh, so everyone, just so that we're crystal clear, what you saw right now is a DAP that has a lot of AI agents on it. It's being powered by a hive called Propolis that has multiple GPUs. And you as a user, if you have a GPU to contribute, uh, Propolis, the hive will soon be able to accept your GPU uh, to contribute to the hive. But it can also right now, uh, Brent, if you pull up the pod screen on the hive, uh, if you can have a look there, yes. So Propolis.ai, uh, Propolis is the hive. And on the Propolis, you will be able to see this really cool dashboard. Uh, if you go next, Brent, which is the output that this hive is creating. And you would be able to see if you're a pod holder, a revenant owner, or an INFT owner, your pod, your uh, existing, if you go next, Brent, uh, your yeah, pod. I, your... Say, I think this is very important because we have a couple of people that have joined a little bit later in Discord, and they're asking about how pods were integrated into this. So this is perfect timing. So you would be able to see like how your pods are contributing to this GPU cluster, this hive. Um, you can also see how your GPUs down the line, you'll be able to contribute to this GPU cluster and you'll earn rewards for contributing to this uh, hive, right? So going back to the first principles, uh, the hive powers the AI models, does inference for them, and that is delivered at the DAP that Sarah just showed all of you. Um, so with that, I think uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on the hives right now uh, because it's quite a bit to cover. We will be doing another follow-up call with the community there um, as we get closer to launching the hive because there's quite a bit of material on how to stake into a hive, how the hives work, how the pods work. But rest assured, uh, our community and the existing asset owners in the Elithia ecosystem of pods, archives, revenants, INFTs will have a lot of opportunities for points and rewards as these hives go live and the ability to launch your own hive. There's a lot of documentation we're gonna be putting out right now that uh, Brent might be frowning about a little bit because we spend a lot of time documenting all of this. So I think the main thing here is it might be fun Brent right now because everyone's asking, how do we access this tab? How do we get access? Mm -hmm. And I'm conscious we've gone on for quite a bit of time. Let me just finish in one last uh, sort of, uh, uh, informational note, the, the the way that we are doing this, why this is important, Brent, if you can go to the final, final, final slide, which is slide 48. Yes, um, thank you. If you are a user of this DAP, there are many benefits you'll get, uh, this third-party DAP, right? It's different. It's separate from the AI protocol. Um, it's separate from Aletheia AI. It's a third-party DAP genuinely developed with the intention of allowing users to discover AI agents and you get the opportunity when you uh, buy and sell keys, when you have creator fees, when you have creator earnings, when you have key holder rewards because you own a key of a specific agent, when you have leaderboard rewards as a creator, when you have leaderboard rewards as a key holder, there's many different avenues for you to have fun with this agentic AI platform uh, because this is really an evolution of what a real... Um, a GPT, when it's decentralized, what can it do when you combine smart contracts at scale, right? So if I go back all the way, and then Maliha, is there anything else you'd like to add here on this slide? Uh, no, uh, this is this covers everything that Sarah showed us on the site, the things we talked about, about, you know, the benefits and the incentives that, you know, favors all the creators, unlike what we've shown with the contrast of having very opaque revenue shares and, you know, showing all the on-chain activity, the incentives that we all have by participating in this DAP, doing what we love. Um, no, I think it's already been captured really well. And uh, I I, I'm very there's excited. There's one thing missing. One thing missing here in the, is the all fact right. that the, the DPT is owned, right? So the DPT is also tradable. Um, so yes. it's in your wallet and you'll see, you know, yes. cool new features get, come in the future get, as these things happen. If you get tired of your DPT, you can mm -hmm. actually sell it as an NFT. 
or you can buy another person's DPT. That's quite an interesting uh, um, addition. Yeah. Rent. So but yes. essentially you own your hard work, right? So nothing's wasted. You're in control of your hard work, your time, your efforts. Yes. One of the few privileges on building on a decentralized stack is that the ownership is a is a valuable and key part of this entire ecosystem. So if I go all the way back, Brent, to slide, the critical, critical slide, slide 18, which 18. is what season three or epoch three is about, which is really like, can we create a genuinely open ecosystem where a user, a bot entrepreneur, can go in and create an AI agent, have it be completely decentralized, permissionless, have it be powered by decentralized GPU clusters, and the AI protocol governs this, right? If you're an AI token holder, you can govern it. If you're a pod holder, you can contribute to a hive. If you're an INFT owner, you can contribute to a hive. If you're a GPU owner, you can contribute to a hive. If you're a bot entrepreneur, you can create a DPT that creates value in the ecosystem. We can get rewarded, right? And all of this is on smart contracts, transparent in your wallets, very easy integrations with Privy, very powerful integrations with Biconomy, very valuable partnership with True Foundry videos, which we will share with our community specifically, because this is really a whole ecosystem effort to be able to create uh, um, uh, this level of change or transformation. So we're very, very excited to uh, release this. So what we're going to do is a staged, uh, uh, staged launch of this. We're going to release this in a very specific way to our community. Uh, there's going to be a time period of about a week and a half or so of trialing this out and giving us feedback and bugs. So there will be a whitelisting process. Brent is going to walk you through that uh, process with our third party uh, partners. They will walk you through how this DAP should, uh, how you can get access to this DAP. If you go to the site now, you'll see it live, but you won't be able to sign up. And that's very, very deliberate because we want to be able to whitelist and we want to be able to reward you for your contributions because this next one and a half weeks, uh, we will be able to give you some rewards for helping clean out any bugs before we aim for the complete uh, overall launch with our third-party partner. So, uh, Brent, do you want to walk people through the process of signing up and uh, this QR code? Thank you, everyone, for listening in, dialing in. About 150 of you. Really, really exciting to see so many people. So exciting. The Discord coming back to life. Uh, I hope all of you are excited. I think you love the product um, that... The, uh, the the uh, the team is built in the sense of like the realism, the ability for these DPTs to actually be able to create uh, opportunities for creators to make uh, to earn a living. Um, so yes, so Brent, walk people through this opportunity and uh, give them some perspective on how they can sign up. Yeah, so I'm actually at this moment. So we really wanted to do this for our community, as as Arf mentioned, um, and reward the community uh, for being early. Um, and being a part of uh, our journey um, and the AI Protocol's journey through getting this uh, together. So what we're going to do is allow uh, Discord members exclusive access to the, the DAP. And so I am actively at this moment updating the permissions to a channel uh, that you guys will be able to view momentarily. And all you need to do uh, you should see it. I just opened up. It is uh, my DPT beta access. Uh, and so all you guys will need to do is put in your email address. And then within 24 hours, we'll be able to get you access uh, to the site. So you'll be able to go and sign up. So this is exclusive just for Discord members. Um, I'm so excited for you guys to get the chance to play with this site. There are probably Sadly, it, it, this can come back on me. There are probably 40 things on the site that we weren't able to cover today due to time. So I'm excited for you guys to play around and find some Easter eggs. Uh, there's, and, and there's a lot. There's a lot on uh, my DPT. There's a lot. So that much. We were able to only cover like some areas, but uh, the level of depth this uh, product has gone into and the opportunity for creators to genuinely participate and enjoy and have a great experience. We do want to test this out and we want to, there's a lot of material coming out. I think, Brent, the other thing we should also do for the community is share documentation. There's quite yes. a bit of documentation that's been written. Uh, we will populate the Discord with that documentation as well. There's also something really, really cool uh, I would like to share, which is very valuable. Uh, all, this entire DAP has been made mobile friendly. There is a 
screen. Brent, if you can play the quick screenshot. I know sound is not working on your end, which is perfectly fine. The screens themselves, I think it's on slide 28. If you Thank can you. press play on that, uh, Brent, just so people understand that these uh, DPTs are also mobile friendly. So it's going to be really fun for people to be able to interact or create these DPTs, but also be able to talk uh, and chat and buy and sell keys and dreams. So think of this as like AI agents that are, you know, in, they're in your pocket, right? They're, they can interact with you. They can uh, do really cool things with you. At later stages, these AI agents, as they become more mature, they will be able to do on-chain actions for you, uh, which is where the roadmap of this is going. So we'll have another community call to update after the test is done, just so we get all of the feedback necessary. But this is uh, something that we're all really excited about and want to share with you. There's still quite a bit on the hives that we have not covered, uh, especially if you are a Revenant owner or if you want to launch your own hive, how you would do that. Uh, we have some very clear documentation. We're going to start sharing this content in, uh, in the spirit of transparency and openness as we open this up and open up the protocol uh, to become more decentralized. So, yes, uh, with that, I think, Brent, you want to go back to the screen of uh, the whitelisting and then we can have the community uh, finalize all of this and uh, take some. I don't know whether there are any outstanding questions, but I think we've addressed most of them as they came up in the, in the, in the Discord chat, right? Yeah, yeah, we certainly will. And just as you mentioned, this is the first introduction. Um, we'll we'll have more, plenty more calls. I, I think uh, you know, hives deserve their own. We can do some community meetups, um, get back to Twitter Spaces as well, and have some discussions on these things um, and how things are going. So, really excited to be engaged with the community. We've had a lot of people already uh, sign uh, or put their emails in. We'll get you guys that access ASAP. We want you guys to play with it today. Um, and I'm really excited to see what you guys uh, create because uh, as the more as more and more people get on this platform and are playing and creating, um, it's only going to be more fun for everyone. So uh, we'll we'll get you guys set up soon. And yes, I think uh, very grateful to uh, third party partners, uh, the wonderful engineers and the team for building this out. Brent Maliha, the marketing team, um, a lot of really valuable. Uh, I think this is really something very exciting for the protocol, uh, but we now need your feedback and your guidance on how we can, how the protocol and this third party DAP can improve, right? So we wanna make sure that uh, we reward you for your contribution. So there is also a reward or a bounty uh, that's coming, which is part of the leaderboard rewards framework for all of you who get whitelisted, you will be eligible. But there are certain things that I wanna be very clear about. Uh, for example, uh, the smart contract levels, the bonding curves are priced in ETH right now. There is some consideration at the protocol level, at the governance level, as to what happens if ETHs, ETH starts to really become very expensive. Would we be pricing out a lot of uh, users who would want to participate? So there are some considerations here. We'll take your feedback. Uh, there's also a proposal that we'll put out on upgrading your pods to L5s. Uh, which is something that we will talk a little bit more about uh, so that you can launch your Hive. So the documentation does cover this. Uh, we will put a proposal out there shortly. I didn't want to dive so deeply into this because we are sharing a lot of information and I don't want to overwhelm people. So I think another call, Brent, might be helpful because we've we've gone a little bit over time. All right. I think one, one last thing, Arif, I just want to make sure I button up for my end in the Discord because we have a lot of emails in. Um, just so you guys know, uh, we're not on this site. There's no connecting your wallet at all. You are the Web3 wallet is connect is created for you. So I just want to make sure. Look for yeah. a, a, a message from an official team member, myself or a manager or one of the agents uh, within Discord. We will not DM you. Um, so uh, we'll let you guys know when you're whitelisted uh, publicly. Uh, and we'll make sure we tag you uh, within uh, the MyDPT beta access channel. So I just want to make sure that's out there for security purposes. We're not going to be DMing you. We would love your feedback as well, because there were several reasons uh, why the third-party DAP developers felt necessary to disable MetaMask here. Uh, there are opportunities there, but like uh, with the Privy integration, there's a lot of value uh, that is being created for Web2 users uh, because they don't have to go through that process. But there is a slight trade-off. I welcome your thoughts, feedback, comment. Uh, we are really opening up the protocol as more third-party DAP developers come and build on the AI protocol. 
All right. A lot of this was uh, really, really uh, fascinating to reconnect to the community, to see the Discord come back to life. Uh, I know the team is a little bit stretched and a bit exhausted as well after uh, this uh, this wonderful uh, uh, communication. And I think really grateful to Sarah for bringing this to life. So please, everyone, uh, uh, send your emails. Uh, we'll get you whitelisted. We'll get you started. Uh, we need your feedback. There's also going to be a rewards program. So uh, that is something that can uh, move us all forward as we get ready to bring this uh, bring this out to the world. Uh, see the documentation. Yes. Maybe it should <laughs> is for people who can summarize the documentation. You know, like yeah. just some rewards. There's quite a bit to share. Thank Thanks, you very guys. much.